Okay, now I'm going to do the how to do a problem on the period of oscillations of a pulley with a spring and a weight. So I'm going to do a general problem where I imagine I have a pulley here. I'll have a certain mass, let's say it uh, has a 2 kilogram mass, and I'll put another axle on it too. And then I'll put a string like this and I'll say, okay, it's connected to a spring, right? The spring constant is, let's say, 200 Newton per meter. Then the, it comes like this on the axle, and then on the, the end of the pulley, I have another string. Then I have a weight here. Let's say the weight is uh, 10 kilograms, right? So what I'm going to do is um, pull on this weight, right, and then let go. And then the system is going to oscillate. So what is the period of oscillation? What's the frequency of oscillation? What's the period of oscillation of this? And then I'll give the pulley some uh, weight, right? And then, of course, imagine that the pulley is hanging from the uh, wall like this, so it's supported, right? And then uh, I can give this some radius. The radius of this big R is equal to, let's say, 0.8 meters. And then the small r, I'll make it uh, 0.4 meters, so half the radius. So how do we approach problems like this, where you have a spring, you have a weight, you have a pulley, the pulley has mass, there is two different axles on the pulley, the spring or the weight is connected to one of the axles and wrapped around the other one is the other object. So I can make the spring on the outer pulley and then I can make the weight on the smaller axle. So I can change the variables of this problem, but how do we approach this? So what we have to do is we have to say, okay, let's displace this from equilibrium. Okay, what are the equations of motion of this when you displace it from equilibrium, right? So of course you have tension here, T, right? It's going to cause the weight to go up, right? It's going to cause it to accelerate up. So we're going to say T minus mg, this is the mass of the object, so we'll call here m1, is equal to m1a, right? The, we're assuming the spring has no weight, so there is no force equations on the spring itself, right? But then what happens is the tension here, uh, when, you, when this one goes down by a certain distance, the spring stretches by a certain distance, right? So this is, let's say, x. When you pull it down x, the spring goes up by a certain value x, and then the spring exerts a force on this end, kx. The, the, the tension in this string is due to the spring pulling on the string with a force equal to the Hooke's law, right, kx. Depending on how much this one goes down x, that force determines the force on this side of the pulley, right? So then that's gonna, now what we're gonna do is analyze the torques on the pulley, right? So this is the force equations on the weight, and now we're gonna analyze the torques on the pulley, okay? So on the pulley we have like this, we have here tension T, then we got here Kx, right? So if they're, if they're wrapped on a different axle, the torque, that's also going to change the torque. So torque on this is going to equal Kx times the little r minus, the, this is the tension times the big R, that's equal to the moment of inertia of the pulley times alpha, right? Then we're going to use the shape of the pulley. Let's assume the shape of the pulley is solid cylindrical. Right, so then we're going to have here, um, if it's a solid cylinder, we're going to have half times mass of the pulley times the radius of the pulley. Well, the radius of the pulley is the same thing as what we're calling big R. So the radius of the pulley squared times alpha. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to say radius of the pulley times alpha is equal to the tangential acceleration at the edge of the pulley, right? So we have here kxr minus tr half mass of the pulley, keep one of the r's, right, and then r alpha, that's a tangential of the, the edge of the pulley, and then we're going to say the a tangential at the edge of the pulley is the same as the acceleration of the block. They're accelerating together, right? So then uh, we're going to have here half mass of the pulley, uh, r, okay, and then we're going to have here a tangential is going to be the same as a, okay? So then, uh, what can we do? Well, we can get rid of the tension in this problem, right? Uh, we can substitute this T into this T, okay? Okay. So it ends up that this uh, is going to be a differential equation, similar to the spring block situation, <coughs> right? And then we're going to say here, 
take this one over there, bring everything to this side, so we have here, um, right, and that's equal to negative M1GR, okay? So now we have a differential equation. So uh, remember the case with when you have always go back to when there was just one block and one spring. If you ever get confused on spring block problems, go back to that case and try to analyze the equations of that case. If you have just M and you pull it like this, right, then you just have here negative kx is equal to ma, so zero is equal to m uh, a plus kx, and then we have here m a plus, uh, so we have here m d squared x dt squared plus kx. So remember the solution to this is that it oscillates back and forth along its, uh, around its equilibrium position, which is x is zero, right? So then we have here uh, x, then the frequency of oscillations is the square root of k over m. So in this case, what's going to be the frequency of oscillation? Omega. Well, in our case, whatever is in front of the x becomes our k. So what's in front of the x? It's kr, right? Square root of kr. Okay? And then what's in front of the d squared x dt squared? The m. That's this whole thing, right? So then we have here half mass of pulley, uh, plus mass m1 times r, okay? So this is our general result. This is the frequency of oscillation. And once we know the frequency of oscillation, we can say 2 pi square root of m over k, that's the period of oscillation. So I can just then reverse it. Uh, the period of oscillation, 2 pi square root half mp plus m1 r over kr, okay? So of course, if they were wrapped around the same axle, if this one was also big R, right, what would happen if this one was big R and the other one was big R? So there was no small axle. Then this would be big R, this and this would cancel, and then the, uh, the period of oscillation would just be that, right? So you see how general this is? Once you get a general result, you can then interpret that result, right? What if the weight was wrapped on the small axle and the spring was wrapped around the small axle, what would change? So then what would happen, this one over here would be m1 little r, little r, right? You would have to go through the calculations a bit and follow what would change if the weight was wrapped on the small axle. This would change to little r, this would change to little r, this would stay big r. And then you would go through, develop another equation like this, it'll look a little bit different, but you can pretty much derive a new equation for what the frequency of oscillation is going to be, right? Now, what's the meaning of this thing? For the weight at the end of a spring, horizontal spring, it ends up being zero, you see? So zero means that the equilibrium position is x equals zero. Well, in this case, what's the equilibrium position? Right, what's the equilibrium position? So remember, when you hang a 10 kilogram weight, that's gonna cause it to already go down a little bit. After that, you're going to have to stretch it a little bit more in order to make it oscillate around that new equilibrium position. So because this weight is making it kind of go down, you have a new equilibrium position uh, uh, being established. What is that new equilibrium position? In this case, there is no new equilibrium position. The equilibrium position is x equals zero. The way, the way we can do it is that at the equilibrium position, because it's, ha it's not stretched, the acceleration is zero, right? Then if you stretch it some more and then it goes back and forth like that, the acceleration is the maximum over here and over here. But at the new equilibrium position, the acceleration is zero. So take your differential equation, set the acceleration equal to zero, that will tell you what the new equilibrium position of, the, of that uh, weight is, right? So what's gonna happen when A is zero? We have negative KRX equals to negative M1GR, so then you have here x equals m1gr divided by kr. Okay, that is the new equilibrium position, the, the, the initial stretch amount, right? Beyond which, if you stretch some more, then it begins to oscillate around that new equilibrium position. So this is x equilibrium, we can say. Okay? So... Of course, if they were wrapped both at the big R, 
then this big R would cancel this big R and the new equilibrium position would just be the M1G over K, which makes sense, right? If this canceled this, then the new equilibrium position would simply be the weight of this divided by the spring constant of this spring. So that would be just these two would cancel and that would be the new equilibrium position. So that makes sense. Now we can put in all the numbers and see what answers we are getting, okay? So then, it's, okay, so the new equilibrium position, 0.98 meters. That means this thing stretches quite a bit, right? But that's about a meter long. The spring stretches meter up, and then this stretches a meter down, and then it rests there. Then if you give it a slight more uh, stretch amount, then it starts to oscillate around that new equilibrium position. What's the period of oscillation? Okay, so then you can say 2 pi square root of, then you can take half the mass of the pulley, right? And then you get here one kilogram. Then you add that to the mass that's hanging, which is 10 kilogram, right? Then you multiply that by the big R, which is 0.8, divided by K, which is 200, and then the 0.4, right? So then you're gonna do 11, pretty slow. It's gonna go up and it's gonna go down. It's gonna take the full two seconds. So just going up is gonna take one second. And then coming down is going to take one second. So the full period of oscillation is 2.08 seconds. So now you can do different kinds of problems like this. You can wrap them around the, uh, the small axle. You can wrap them around different axles. You can have a spring and a weight. Now you know the meaning of the, the extra value that you get in the differential equation. That's the new x equilibrium. And you can then model it based on the regular block and spring problem come up with a new equation for the period of the motion and then actually get a number from this, okay? Thank you very much.